All right, welcome back to another video. So I recently came into a stack of Macintosh LC, LC2, and LC3s. Um, this one here, this is a uh, Performa 405. I've had this one for a while. Um, this one I've installed the uh, Apple IIe card in. Um, everything works great. I use a, a Blue SCSI in here, uh, boot up, everything works fine. The only thing really missing from this system is the original 2E cable. Um, those are going for like 90, 100 bucks on eBay, but you can get these uh, cheap, cheaply made Chinese uh, Apple IIe card Y cable adapters. So this plugs into the back of the card and then it gives you a floppy drive port and a joystick port. Um, the only difference between these and the real ones is the real ones can run the five and a quarter drives. These ones, uh, one of the power pins isn't mapped all the way through. Uh, the gentleman who made this originally uh, said he did that on purpose, I believe. And then, of course, the, the Chinese knockoffs just rip off his design, and uh, they don't have it either. Probably not a huge deal, um, but if you wanted to use a five and a quarter drive with your Apple IIe card, you would need to have the original cable. Um, I suspect maybe you could power the drive a different way, too, with a, an external power supply, but, uh, again, hasn't been a problem for me, so I haven't looked into it. Um, so, that being said, I know this one works, um, and I've got these two... LC is here. Uh, this one is an LC, and this one I believe is an LC as well. Yes, yeah, so I got these two here. Um, so what I want to do is just see if the cards in them are working. Um, I've gone through and taken the batteries out, but I haven't really done any more uh, inspection than that. So let's take a quick look in here. Uh, you can see we do have the Apple IIe card, um, which we can gently pop out. Um, these back here are the capacitors that are uh, always going to leak. This one, you know, these don't look too bad. Uh, I do see a lot of capacitor goo, I guess, on the board here. So, yeah, they have leaked. Um, they can uh, corrode the CPU, this Motorola 68020. Um, I can see there's some corrosion on the uh, legs of that already. Um, and then the power supplies in these almost always need to be recapped as well. Uh, so this one does have an 80 megabyte hard drive from 1990 in it. Um, and typically I wouldn't power these on until, you know, I'd recapped and at least cleaned it. But uh, I think I'm just going to do a quick tester. I don't think it's going to break anything. Um, and then the uh, 2E cards themselves do have two caps as well. They need to most likely be replaced. Um, looking at this one, they both actually seem to be okay. Um, but I will replace these once I confirm this card's functional. Uh, it seems to be in pretty good shape. It does have some rust on the connector here. I think these machines were sitting in a warehouse for a number of years after they were decommissioned, so no surprise there. But the couple others that I've tried have worked okay. So let's get this guy plugged back in. Um, we'll unconnect the existing hard drive. Maybe easier said than done. Uh, I'm gonna just take it out, I guess. Uh, and you can see this one has the LED on front. Uh, I do see some rust now under where the hard drive goes. Um, so I don't think that's from anything in this machine. I don't see any rust around the power supply, um, nor where the battery was. Battery's in great shape, so. I'm guessing some water got into the front of this case. You can also see the whole front edge is rusty here, so this floppy drive may not be in great shape, but it doesn't look too bad. So let's take this drive out. Um, let's plug in my blue SCSI. All right, and we'll spin it around. I got my various cables plugged in. So I'm gonna use a keyboard monitor and power. Plug in the monitor. Plug in the keyboard. And we'll plug in the power. Make sure it's switched off. And let's turn it on and see what we got. What we have here is a dead power supply. So no surprise there. So I'll get these unplugged um, and we'll take the card out. And 
And we'll leave it off to the side. We'll take out my blue SCSI. And we'll close this guy up. So next we have uh, another LC here. Same kind of deal. This one has the card as well, as well as a 40 megabyte hard drive. We're going down in size here. And we'll just put these off to the side over here. So the first thing we'll do is pop the drive out. Side. And we'll take the 2E card out and take a look at it. Um, this one does not seem to have any rust on it. It's kind of dusty, but no rust. Uh, capacitors both look pretty good in it. Of course, they will need to be replaced, but looks okay for now. Uh, checking the capacitors here on this board. Yep, they've leaked as well. Um, Processor looks like it's in better shape here on this machine than the other one, but uh, you know, it can leak under the sound chip, it can leak under uh, the ADB controller. So, definitely need to get this one recapped and cleaned up. I uh, don't see any rust in the front of this one, so let's go ahead and give this one a try. Let's see if we get any life out of this one. What do I think the chances are? Uh, I'd say about probably 25% it will actually turn on and maybe 10% it will actually boot. We'll find out. So it's in the off position, plug in the power, plug in the keyboard, and we'll plug in the monitor. All right, let's see what happens. Nothing. All right. So we've got two dead power supplies, and no surprise about that whatsoever. So what I'll do is I'll take these cards out. I'll attempt to take these cards out, and take my blue SCSI out. So I'll recap these uh, later. I'm not too worried about them. You know what? damage already happened to them is probably done. There's no real rush at this point to get them cleaned up. And plus I do have, like I mentioned, a stack probably, I don't know, 20 more of these? Twin LCs, LC2s, and LC3s. So there is uh, some work for me to do there. But in the meantime, let's take this Performa 405, which I know works because I have recapped it and everything's good. I'm just going to use one of these dead LCs here to prop the monitor up so we can see it better. I don't think I'm covering up any of my cables. Alright, so we'll take this one. Pop it open. And we'll plug my blue SCSI back in. Good enough there. We'll take out the known good card. Um, no problems here. Uh, so with this Performer 405, what I've done is I've recapped it using tantalum caps. So they're not the uh, electrolytic ones. These ones won't leak when they fail, but they typically fail short, which may not be so good either, but you know, it's kind of a six of one, half dozen of the other. Power supplies recapped as well. So let's put one of these unknown 2e cards in and see what we get power going keyboard and the monitor let's power this guy on and of course this one works you get the beautiful boot chime so with these 2e cards uh, a lot of people I don't know if a lot of people, some people refer to them as emulators for an Apple IIe. Uh, they are actually not emulators. So what Apple did is they 
took all the 2E hardware, compressed it down into just a couple of ICs, and then this is actually a full Apple 2E running on this card. So it's not emulating anything. It's running on not original hardware, but hardware that is akin to the original. Uh, and again, the connector that goes in the back, um, it's got a three row port connector. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's how it looks. This is the rusty one. Um, I did not put a battery back in this one when I recapped it. Uh, I tend to keep batteries out. Um, no battery, so that's why it's in black and white booting up here because there's no PRAM saved. But that is no problem. It switches to color mode all on its own here. All right, so we'll let it boot up. Um, we know at least the card didn't short out the system, which is good. Um, once we get booted in here into macOS, we can run the Apple IIe software with the ProDOS uh, virtual disk that I have, and just make sure this card is functional. Now these Macintosh LCs and Performa 405s were not known for being speed demons. Um, LC stands for low cost, and that they are. All right, so let's run 2E startup. All right, I think that's running. Uh, so now if we go to Gonna definitely need to remember how to get this stuff running. It's been a while. It's a 2E startup running. There's a way to switch between Mac OS and the 2E system. What is it? So we're booted into 2E, uh, running ProDOS, and this is the big mess of wires, floppy emu image. Um, you can download the blue SCSI image for this exact uh, system that I have running here. So we can go in here and list out all of the different things on this image. Um, we've got disk-based, file-based, and MECC games. Uh, who doesn't like MECC games like Oregon Trail? That'll be everybody's favorite. Now, of course, they did later release Oregon Trail for uh, Mac OS, so we don't technically need to run an emulator, but it's not the true experience if you're not running it on an Apple II. But yeah, this card looks like it's working just fine. So if I can remember how to get back to Mac OS, uh, there's some command you can do to switch back. I don't recall what it is. We'll just force quit. All right, so let's shut this guy down. And let's try out the other one. a good sign it's booting up so we'll let this boot and then we'll take a look at this next to e card
So these 2E cards work in most of the Macs that have the LC PDS slot. Um, I think there are a couple exceptions, maybe the Quadris 605 and one other one, um, but pretty much any of the uh, LC models, uh, Performa 550, Performa 575, it'll work in those as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice card to have, and they're, for some reason, extremely expensive on eBay. You know, $300, $350. So I don't know, you know why people would want to spend so much. You can get an actual Apple IIe for less. But, you know, I'm just happy to have them. So let's run IIe Startup. And see if this card is functional as well. Seems to be good so far. And we're back in our big mess of wires uh, floppy emu image. Um, so let's look for a different game. Just pick one here randomly. Uh, free fall. Freefall does not work. You can tell I do not remember my uh, 2E syntax. I can take a screenshot. Alright, let's quit that and try again. We'll try a different game. Uh, hopefully it was just that game that's not functional and not that the card is broken. I do think we actually need to restart after, uh, after that. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're back in the big mess of wires floppy emu uh, Protoss boot disk. Well, let's just try a different game this time. Uh, I won't pick anything specific. Uh, I don't know, how about Mars Cars? No buffers available. Okay. So I think this card may be having some issues. Uh, let's reboot one more time and try Oregon Trail, because we know that works at least on my other two cards. All right, yeah, this looks good. So 
I would say this card is functional as well. I'm not sure why those other two games didn't work, but uh, I don't think there's any problems with the card. I think it's either with the image or it's a unsupported software for this particular card. Maybe this card doesn't have the 128K of RAM. I don't know how much RAM these have on them, but things look good here. So uh, I think with that being said, I'll shut this guy down and get these cards out, get my original card back in, and then I've got some work to do on, on these other, other two machines. Let's do that, let's swap this guy out. And we'll swap this one in. So yeah, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. Just a quick test of a couple of 2E cards. I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, of course, uh, feel free to put them in the comments, and uh, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks for your time, and have a great rest of your day.